And I think for me, I just look at it as it's the, the iPad analogy is just spot on. And I think that's a good way to capture why I now look at it as less revolutionary in the wake of trying it. And on the way into it, I was like open to having it be this transformative technology that blows Were you? my mind. Were you I was, open to it? I was. I promise you I was. Because <laughs> I was like, I was looking at all these morons just stumbling around the streets and on the subway, pinching oh, their little let, fingers. Let, let's get to that. Let's, let's get to that in a moment. Because I, I think okay. there, I, I, there is your point of that. But the other point I want to make about Quest is this privacy bit, which I think is underrated makes is way more compelling if you're a cheap headset right like like like, you know and i think for it's a great you know yeah there's no way you're doing work in a some people are because they're crazy i can't handle the resolution but relatively speaking watching video it's you know it's more it's more competitive um you know you're 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 not doing the pass through you're watching video you're staying still the 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 eye sickness is maybe not gonna be a thing gaming it's obviously just way better having controllers makes it ton of difference the battery pack blows it's not it mm. sucks everyone who's saying it's not a big deal is lying to you can you explain it is, why does it suck because i i, I saw it and I, I was like i i can probably manage that battery pack like it doesn't right, seem all that inconvenient you're in the apple store they sat you down in one spot and you didn't move and you and you, were, you weren't like trying to pick it up and then oh you gotta forget about it's there and then get it in the right spot and like just the cord is just you're always cognizant of like not getting it snagged or not getting it hooked on something else. And, you know, I'm going to like yank it off my desk at some point and it's going to drop and it's going to be a big thing. It like for, you know, I'm sure they would rather not have it. I understand why they, they chose it. It does, again, fit much better with the I'm just going to leave my Vision Pro at my couch at mm-hmm. night when I finish work, I'm going to sit down and put it on and use it. And there it doesn't feel like a big deal for being at my desk and wanting to, you know, get coffee or move around or xyz if you have to do any sort of movement and i don't just mean movement in the headset i just mean like movement like day to day like you're working and you want to get a drink of water massive pain in the rear end um i mean you are talking to a wired headphone guy so wires are no big deal for me but i understand if you can't handle it yeah fair point (laughs) touche touche uh get on my level one day there is a bit of the people walking around my favorite video was Casey Nestat um you know doing the you know, riding a skateboard through New York City and wearing yeah. it all over uh, which is Great obviously energy. sort of ridiculous I will I love Casey I mean I Casey is like sort of like one of the OG YouTubers I love how even in this video he's like calling out MKBHD and Mr. Beast and like the new generation and, all that and you sort know of what thing. I'll, I'll let you finish in a minute but I just want to say that that is why I was open to the Vision Pro being really really cool because I like the energy of the people who were really enthusiastic about this product more than the energy of the people who just reflexively shit on everything that comes out in tech and oh, were just but, but enough snarking. therapy about self-hating on this episode <laughs> well, I, but I, that's the thing i was look, looking inward i was like do i want to be with this like perpetually negative whiny crowd or do i want to be with this crowd that looks like they're having a great time and has like a a, a a positive optimistic outlook on life so i like the video from casey and the video from marquez so i i wanted to be with them but i just couldn't quite get there in terms of like overwhelming optimism but yeah I mean, marquez event, is more of a continue. straightforward review casey was the sort of crazy one but but uh, so here's here's a couple points on that number one um i don't think they were absurd videos right like th- there there is a vision of no pun intended this future where you have this capability of interaction with your external environment. Joanna Stern latched onto this with, with her sort of review, this idea of having the timer over the pot that is, it is actually keeping track of and it, like just how much more you, that is just like you talk about the, the direct interaction is really important versus the, the abstraction of your eyes and the clicking direct connections make a big difference. It's one thing to have a timer on your phone or two timers running on your phone that are associated with two different pots of water. This idea that the timer is on the pot that it is actually associated with just makes life so much easier. It's so much natural. Now, <laughs> so th- does it though? <laughs> absolutely. No, 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 yeah. no. What you what you're focused on is how do you get to that state, right? And there's all sort. This is the 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 bit we talk about of envisioning a, a long run future where you can imagine. You look at the 
pile of water and say, hey, set a timer for that for five minutes. It just pops up on there. You didn't do anything. You already had the sort of the glasses on or whatever it might be. It just yeah. sort of happens for you. And I actually, the reason I love Casey's video is not just because I love Casey and he's great, but by the way, if anyone knows Casey, I had an hour long conversation with him in a bar like five or six years ago. And it was such a great conversation. It felt really <laughs> awkward. I never introduced myself or who I was. It was just a great conversation. And I've wanted to reconnect with him ever since. And I, 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 it never, I just, it never happened. Um, so <laughs> yeah, that's my, this that's is my like a, out there. A New York Times misconnection column. <laughs> yeah. No, podcast. it is. It was in Hamburg, Germany of all places, actually. Um, uh, but anyhow, great guy. Uh, but yeah, but you didn't also, drop your name and he also just talked to a stranger for an hour so no i think he enjoyed it because like you. yeah we're, we're, neither of us are like we're just normal people in a bar having a conversation about stuff Love um it. uh it's been, anyhow the uh, uh it's funny because we were both the next day speaking in front of like twenty thousand people <laughs> like we i think i went on like two hours after he did uh but anyhow the uh th this bit I think it does speak to something real. And by the way, if I imagine, you know, 10 years down the road and you just have normal glasses and you get the Vision Pro experience as it is today, I think it's pretty darn compelling. And in this case, Apple's software choices where it's not a five gazillion screens in front of you. It is an augmentation of what's around you. It's an iOSification of the world is i think the right approach and when you understand you know apple's talk about you know tim cook being very negative on vr and say we want ar as sort of xyz there's a lot to to be positive about this approach and i think that i think maybe the key to the way apple is approaching this and i think it's a valid way is where you twist the digital crown you go in and out of reality you can yep. have you can have the VR experience, which is basically from Apple's perspective, I believe, and is going to be inevitable given the fundamental limitations of the software direction they're going, is really going to be watching movies, watching video, watching TV. And ideally, it's going to be this 3D experience that's going to be amazing. And then you're going to go back to reality and you'll just have this this tool that will help you out in real life that will you know give you information when you need it sort of xyz and i think the vision pro is pretty clearly in that direction and that means it's not necessarily right for me and what i wanted because what i want is like this the 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 sci-fi futuristic 47 screens in front of me i'm in my battle center sort of commanding mm -hmm. the world sort of Real thing and apple's shit, not yeah. building that which is fine and guess what you would not want that if you're riding a skateboard through New York City. You don't want like 47 <laughs> gazillion things going on and all those sorts of pieces. So I, I think at the end of the day, the Vision Pro is not for me for productivity. I think the productivity use cases are actually far worse than I expected. It's it, pretty disappointing in that regard for me. Mm -hmm. I think the video experience is, I think it's actually better than I expected, to be honest, because I knew the fidelity and the and the audio I didn't fully appreciate the just sitting on the couch and slipping it on and how seamless that is. To me, that's a really big deal. I, you know, like to it to a where the quest feels burdensome to get into this the seamlessness of this and the the uh ocular ID is amazing. It works every time. You don't have to position your phone to get face ID, right? You don't have to reach out and touch a thing. Might be my I think it is my favorite feature. Just the it, it just works every single time and you don't even know about it or think about it. And part of it is you pop it on and you're logged in immediately because it did, did the little scan. And so all of that is great. Not necessarily what I wanted, but that's a me problem, not an, not, not an Apple problem per se. Yep. No, that, that makes sense. And I think for me, I could see it being incredibly useful if I were like stranded on some remote, military base for six months or like if anyone's seen no, no, you have to you have to not think about the as it is today think about the hardware in 10 years that's the for for well, this particular no, use case but i mean there are certain use case there are certain use cases where like i the immersive video of my kids would be incredibly valuable if i were stranded from my family but i'm not and so being in person <laughs> we're all family, happy about that <laughs> it's just better than boy wearing the vision pro during the day and i think when i zoom out in the past and here i i can only you know my reference point is a lot of the reviews were like this is the best piece of technology i've ever experienced in the past when you had thrilling new technology they were products that actually solved problems that people had whether it was like google organizing the internet or an ipad or an, or an ipod putting two 200 albums in your pocket 
or, or Facebook or Amazon, like Facebook was connecting me with a bunch of friends stranded around the country. And all of that was kind of thrilling. And this is just a slightly more compelling way to watch TV right now, <laughs> yeah. except that it's $4,000 yes. and you have to enjoy it by yourself. And so I would say the benefits are marginal and the costs, both figurative and literal, are something that everybody who uses technology is paying more attention to. Lately. Right. And, and, so, and I think the people who, who can afford the costs actually have the least benefit from it. Like, I think this is really you're flying compelling business class. Shh, that's between you and I. But yes, <laughs> I didn't mean to call you out. I, I would rather you, you, the collective you. <laughs> I would rather use my laptop on the tray table in my isolated little pot in business class. That is exactly yes. right. Um,